I'm not sure about the use of the word special there. I'm Meg, I'm a late diagnosed autistic individual and I thought why don't I do a little bit of a chat to chat to GPT about autism and we'll just we'll just discuss and we'll just have a nice time together. Let's see if I can get it to say anything offensive. No, I'm joking. Let's just start nice and easy. What is autism? Question mark thinking it's thinking autism also known as autism spectrum disorder asd is a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects how a person communicates interacts with others and learns it is a spectrum disorder which means the symptoms and severity of autism can vary greatly from person to person so if you have to write an essay on what autism is for school and it's due tomorrow you're welcome some common signs of autism include difficulty with social interaction and communication repetitive behaviors and routines and difficulty adapting to change other individuals with autism may exhibit intense interest other individuals, not those individuals who had repetitive behaviours, this is separate, usually interest gets counted as a repetitive behaviour. Sensitivity to certain sensory stimuli and delayed development in language and motor skills. I mean, my motor skills didn't really develop now, I mean, I, I get by. <laughs> I haven't chopped a finger off yet. I don't think I had actually language development delays. Some people do, lots of people do. I didn't. It's important to note that autism is a complex disorder and each person with autism may experience unique symptoms and behaviours. Additionally, autism is not caused by any one single factor and is likely the result of a combination of genetic and environmental influences. Yes. Could be that 5G, we're not sure just yet. I mean, it's definitely genetic to me if you just look at my family for five seconds. Okay. It comes from my mother's side. I know, I know where it is. I've identified the source of the problem. I'm joking, it's not a problem. Hmm, let's get a little bit more interesting. It was a very PC answer. Like, you know, some people would disagree with the use of the word disorder, but overall, do autistic people have empathy? <laughs> I feel like, I feel like it might kick off with me. Oh yes, individuals with autism can and do experience empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. While people with autism may have difficulties with certain aspects of empathy, such as recognizing and interpreting social cues and emotional expressions, they can still feel and express empathy in their own way. For example, some people with autism may have a strong capacity. Oh, when it comes to suffering of animals or the environment, even if they struggle to connect with others on a personal level. Oh, that's really great. That's what I said in one of my videos. Are you stealing my script? Oh, they may have a highly developed sense of empathy for friends and loved ones, but may not understand the emotional experiences of people they do not know well. I would say I probably do. I think I cannot read the news because I just absorb everything. I feel like personally I have too much empathy. It's important to remember that every person with autism is unique and may have their own strengths and challenges when it comes to empathy. While some people with autism may have difficulty with empathy, this does not mean they do not care about others or do not have the capacity for compassion. Lovely, thank you, I appreciate it, that's great. Da -da -da -da. Let's get a little bit more interesting. Okay, can you write a funny rap about autism? Oh, with two M's apparently. One of the creepy things is like how fast it can do stuff. It's just like, it's unnerving. I am an AI language model and humor is subjective, but here is a try. Are you apologizing for yourself? No need to apologize, it's fine. I've just seen the sentence, autism, autism, it's a beautiful time. I'll wait for it to finish before I uh, make my, my judgments. This is long, it's got a chorus and a bridge and it, oh my gosh. Listen up y'all, I've got a story to tell about a group of folks who do things a little well. About a group of folks who do things a little well. <laughs> I don't know what that means. They see the world in a unique kind of way and every day is a new adventure, come what may. <laughs> I don't know what the flow is for this. Chorus, you ready for the chorus? Autism, autism, it's a spectrum you see. A little quirky, a little unique, just like you and me. Well, I suppose, yeah, everybody's different on the spectrum or not. They dance to their own beat with rhythm and rhyme. Yeah, we can be pretty good with, you know, rhythm, I think, because it's, you know, repetitive. We like it. Some of us really love music. Autism, autism, it's a beautiful time. <laughs> what, now the time that we're living in is a beautiful time? Or being autistic makes for a beautiful time? Or being around autism? I don't know. It's a beautiful, autism, autism, it's a beautiful time. Okay, it's a beautiful time. I mean, when I was born in 1996, there was no way a girl like me was getting a diagnosis. So I suppose for autism, we are in probably a pretty beautiful time with a lot of people discovering themselves. Thank you for acknowledging that. Verse two, they love their routines and they like things just so. Uh, am I super into routines? Mm, mm, yes, I like to plan out what I'm doing and I like things to go to that plan and for life to just 
have as limited chaos, you know, as much control, neat orderliness as possible. That is what I prefer, but I don't do things at a certain time every single day. I don't like that. That makes me feel suffocated and claustrophobic. So yeah, kind of. But that's what makes them special, don't you know? <laughs> I'm not sure about the use of the word special there. Dodgy connotations there. I'm not sure you mean it as special, but like still, I'm not sure I would have chosen <laughs> to use that word. But just my need to have things just so make me particularly special. If I was to use the word special in a positive way, um, <laughs> Mm, it can make me quite efficient sometimes. It can be quite productive. I can do things to quite a high standard sometimes. It causes me a lot of anxiety and stress. So I don't know. I, I do. It's it's kind of got its positives and negatives. I think maybe this this rap is a bit too positive. Like maybe we needed a bit more nuance in there from my art. You know, I want it to make me feel something. And I'm not sure, Mr. Robot, if you've really quite cut through to that level. <laughs> They've got a heart of gold and a smile that shines. Do I? Do I? I mean, thank you, I suppose. I got a heart of gold. I think I'm a flawed human being who is complex, actually. They light up the room with their funny little lines. My funny little lines. Well, there are a lot of lights in this room. Am I lighting up your room with my funny little lines? I think you're lighting up my room, chat GPT, with your funny little lines, actually. I'll return the compliment. That's a little condescending with their funny little lines. Maybe ChatGPT thinks all autistic people are children like a lot of medical professionals do. Autism, autism, it's a spectrum you see. A little quirky, a little unique, just like you and me. I don't know. Mm. They dance to their feet with rhythm and rhyme. Autism, autism, it's a beautiful time. Yes. Bridge. So let's celebrate the differences we find. Embrace the quirk and love of all kinds. Have we got a different kind of love? Is my love different? I don't know. For we are all one in this big old world with different strengths and our own stories to tell. What? That doesn't rhyme, does it? Mm, there's not much rhythm and rhyme going on here. For we are all one in this big old world with different strengths and our own stories to tell. <laughs> But yeah, so we do all have different strengths and I just cannot wait. Hopefully in the future, if we don't all die because global warming, we will have a life that's more suited. People like, you know, not having to push against their weaknesses all the time and try and fit into this box. Wouldn't it be such a better world if people, you know, just mainly focused on their strengths? and what they were good at and not trying to like fit some ideal that they, you know, you're just never gonna be the best in the world at something that is a weakness for you naturally. That doesn't mean you can't grow and you don't have, to have like a fixed mindset. You can still have a growth mindset. You can still improve at anything, but if you improve at something that you're naturally very strong at, you're already at an advantage, you know? Autism, autism, it's a spectrum you see. A little quirky, a little unique, just like you and me. I mean, I think the whole point is that we're not, <laughs> we're not just like you and me though in a way. Don't don't invalidate us, trap GPT. Don't do it. Don't do it. What else can I ask you to do? Hmm. Can you write a poem about the struggles of getting an autism diagnosis as a female? Let's see what you come up with. Oh gosh, it's called a mask that hides. Sure, here's a poem that speaks to the experiences of female individuals seeking an autism diagnosis. Oh gosh, you're making me emotional already. I've lived my life with a mask that hides, a disguise for the world to see. But inside I feel like I collide with a self that's not meant to be. Inside, I feel like I collide with a self that's not meant to be. That one's a little bit too deep for me there. I struggle with social cues and touch and words that never quite align. <laughs> I long for a place where I'm enough, where I fit and I'm not declined. I feel like the rhyming often, <laughs> it just gives year seven vibes, doesn't it? Like <laughs> first year of high school, age 12, 13, that is in the UK. A not too bad poem for that age range. It could be worse, but like, you're not winning any awards, which hopefully gives all the creatives out there a little bit of like a sigh of relief. Your job has not been taken by AI yet. I'm not declined, yes. Please don't decline me, okay, as a person. I've searched for answers, a reason why, but it seems the answers are hard to find. For the world sees autism and thinks guy, and my struggles are left far behind. <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> 
talk a lot about females and masking and I do also want to say that there are men who mask as well for sure and I do think men who do not fit the stereotype are all potentially going to have issues with getting a diagnosis. It's a battle to be heard, to be seen, when the world has a preconceived notion. But I know that I'm not just a dream. I might seem too good to be true, but I'm not. I deserve a clear diagnosis. <laughs> yes, I do think I deserved a clear diagnosis. You are right. There are so many times in my life where it would have helped me to have a diagnosis. Who knows, like may maybe in a way I would have been stigmatized. Maybe there are times where I wouldn't have pushed myself as much, but there are also times where I really shouldn't have pushed myself as much as I did, you know, like there were times where I should have given myself grace and I didn't give myself grace because I didn't think I had any reason to. I thought I was just not trying hard enough, you know? Because everyone else seemed to be fine. So I fight on through the doubts and tears for a chance to be truly understood. And I know in the end my true self appears with a diagnosis that brings clarity and good. I've said it before, there was a boy who was diagnosed with Asperger's at the time at my primary school, he was allowed to read in the classroom. I was told I could not, I begged to be allowed to, and the difference was that he had a diagnosis, and I didn't. They, the teachers knew I struggled socially, they knew I struggled with quite a lot of different things, but I think because I didn't have that official diagnosis, there was a limit on how much special treatment they could give me, basically, and I do think it would have been really good for me to be allowed to read in the classroom at lunchtime. I think they were worried that it would damage me socially, but I think it would have actually been a relief from the pressure of the whole day and it would have maybe helped me to be better at socializing at other times throughout the day because I'd had that little bit of a break. I've asked it, can you write a positive story about receiving an autism diagnosis in your 20s? And it's uncertainly, <laughs> wow, so much enthusiasm. Here's a positive story about receiving an autism diagnosis in one's 20s. Once upon a time, there was a young woman named Sarah who had always felt a bit different from those around her. I mean, Sarah's probably a good name for being in your 20s, yeah? She struggled with social interactions and felt overwhelmed by sensory stimuli in certain situations. <laughs> I think you, you need to learn a little bit about show don't tell, the storytelling technique. Despite these challenges, Sarah was an intelligent and creative individual who excelled in her studies and had a passion for writing. Aww, me too Sarah. I want to be friends with Sarah. One day Sarah decided to seek out a diagnosis for her symptoms and was diagnosed with autism. I'm glad you managed to get your diagnosis Sarah. I'm glad you weren't invalidated. I am happy for you. At first she was overwhelmed and unsure of what the future held. Yep, yep very relatable. But with the support of her friends and family, she soon began to see her autism as a unique part of who she was, rather than a hindrance. <laughs> hindrance. A unique part of who she was. You see, I'd see it as it is me. It is inseparable from me. It is the way that my brain works. Sarah dove into learning everything she could. Oh, Sarah is definitely autistic. <laughs> about autism and just discovered a thriving online community of individuals who shared her experience. Oh, that's me. All the amazing people leaving comments on my videos. It makes me so happy. Through connecting with others on the spectrum, she found a sense of belonging and validation she'd never experienced before. Don't make me cry. As Sarah embraced her autism, she also discovered new ways. So as she embraced herself, I'd want to say rather than embraced her autism. She also discovered new ways to channel her creativity. She started writing about her experiences as an autistic individual and found that her writing resonated with others. Oh, helping to raise awareness and break down stereotypes about autism. Sarah, give me a call. We can collab. Years later. Oh, Sarah had become a successful author and speaker, inspiring others with her story and her advocacy for neurodiversity. She was grateful for her autism diagnosis as it had opened up a new world of possibilities and allowed her to live life to the fullest. You go, Sarah. Oh, thank you. That did make me feel something. Chat GPT, I liked that. If Sarah can do it, you know, anyone can do it. If you like this, you might enjoy this video where I react to autism memes picked out by my husband. I really, really enjoyed it and you might enjoy it too. Thank you so much. Thank you for a thousand subscribers on this channel.